Well, tonight, for the first time, you're about to see law enforcement video of the Flora Arson Fire. More than six years ago, the fire claimed the lives of four young girls. They were sisters, ages 5 to 11. Their names were Kiani Welsh, Carrie L. McDonald, Kiara Phillips, and Kiana Davis. The video that you're about to see will be difficult for some people to watch, but it does provide the clearest picture so far of the valiant but unsuccessful efforts to try and rescue those girls that night. Chief Investigator Steve Brown has our exclusive story. This story centers on Carroll County Sheriff's Deputy Drew Yoder. He suffered serious injuries attempting to reach the four girls killed in the Flora fire. We have only ever heard from the deputy once at a brief news conference six weeks after the fire. Some nights it brings tears to my eyes. Sometimes I try not to go past her. But I think I still think of those four little girls standing out there, dancing around, smiling at you, waving at you. This is dash cam video of Yoder responding to the fire. You will only see what the camera is pointed at, but Yoder is wearing a microphone. And at times, you will hear much more than you see. We're right. Flora police officer Joss Dysinger arrives seconds before Yoder. The first voice you'll hear is the girl's mother, Galen Rose. Inside the house, Yoder faced intense heat and thick smoke without protective gear while trying to climb this set of stairs. Then at the top, a landing on the left and another shorter set of stairs leading to the girl's bedroom. The girl's mother desperately tries to direct Yoder around that landing. Yeah, you go around the corner. Please, let's go. Turn around the corner. Keep going. But the smoke was too much. County sitting tone, keep sending off tone, please. We still got four kids inside. We can't get inside. Yoder runs back to his car and races to the Flora Fire Department just four blocks away. The deputy is also a volunteer firefighter. The drive takes 24 seconds. He exits his car, races in, and yells to get the equipment moving. Hey, we need to roll, dude. There's people inside. For the next 45 seconds, it sounds like Yoder is getting into his turnout gear. He then runs back to his car, races back to the scene with fire trucks just behind him. Hey, they're coming. They're right here, dude. They're right here. They're coming. We have an Both Deputy Yoder and Officer Dysinger quickly put on air packs to re enter the house. If you look here, you can see one of them entering, crawling on hands and knees. Just seconds later, something has gone wrong. At 3.45, an emergency call goes out. Officer down. Other firefighters are now working to rescue Yoder while still trying to reach the four girls. And as the fire starts moving more rapidly right to left, from the back of the house to the front door, an alarm sounds signaling an air pack low on oxygen. Firefighters would reach Yoder and the four girls and bring them out. Feverish attempts at CPR were performed on the girls without success. Yoder was rushed to the hospital. At the same time, flames engulfed the entire house. The last thing we see on the video is an advanced life support vehicle pulling up just before 4 a.m. It 
would be almost two months before it was announced the fire was an arson. In the six plus years since, the investigation has not produced an arrest. Before making our final decision to air the dash cam video, we did show it to Galen Rose at her request. She supports airing the video. It is her hope that it will generate tips from the public that might finally bring this case to a close. That number is 1-800-382-4628. You do not have to give your name to provide information. Steve Brown, Fox 59 Investigates. I hope someone out there knows something about this case. Steve, thank you. You can take a closer look at that video at fox59.com. It's there, uh, edited only for profanity. You can also see all of our coverage on the investigation into the floor fire on our website as well. Leah?